Welcome to Yeshiva League podcast tip-off show. This is episode number nine. We got a great show. Uh, episode number nine just means we are getting into the end of the season, which uh, obviously we're deep into the playoff time. We have some big guests to it coming through this week. Our players of this week uh, of the week are Kevin Levy of Hafter and Jordan Zarka of North Shore. We're going to bring them on in a few, but before we do, we're going to start to talk about our sponsors and uh, you know explain everything that they do. So first we have coolkeepers.com who if you've heard me talk for the past nine weeks you know what they do they make great keepers they make great judaic wear if you're looking for a bar mitzvah a wedding any any simple celebration they are the place to go they also have cool fringes for all the cc to wear with all under your uniforms over your shirt whatever you want they have every style you can imagine so that is our cool keepers and cool fringes and then when you get hungry you have holy schnitzel holy schnitzel is a place to get all your eats Uber Eats, you can sit in the restaurants. They have locations everywhere. They are, uh, you know, one of the things here in the five towns where people come in to uh, play the local teams here in the five towns, they always end up at Holy Schnitzel. Sometimes it's a celebratory dinner. Sometimes it's uh, a dinner to talk about a defeat. But Holy Schnitzel is the place to get all your good grub. And uh, we thank them for being sponsors throughout the season. So without further ado, I'm Ari Wickes, the great Akiva Poppers. Let's bring our players of the week on Kevin and Jordan Zarka. Hi, thank you for having us. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, this is great. Also, we should tell our viewers, this is a uh, a little different format. We, uh, you know, Akiva and I, you know, we don't want to be, you know, not having to deal with the playoff you know, tension like everyone else. So we decided we're going to bring them both on at the same time. They're good friends. They're ex-teammates. They may be facing each other in the championship. So we figured, you know, we'll try to get them to hate each other a little bit. I don't think that's possible because they're both great. But, uh, you know, we're going to bring him on. We're going to fire away. We're going to start with Kevin. Then we'll go to Jordan. And then we'll, you know, keep going back and forth until we uh, till we let them go. And we uh, go back to starting our preview of the semifinal game. So Kevin Levy, obviously, is from Hafter, um, a great ball player. Kevin, first of all, thank you for being with us on the show. We're going to start with you because, um, I don't know, we're just starting with you. So tell us about... Obviously, you guys just had a, a huge win. You went into Ramaz and you took care of business in a hostile environment, quarterfinal matchup, which obviously means you're the underdog based on the seedings. Um, I don't think that anyone in half their visions themselves as the underdog. But how do you, as a player that every other team, when they play you, you know, no, no disrespect to your teammates, is focusing, stop Kevin, you're going to beat Hafter. So how do you do that? How do you mentally prepare for that and stay in the moment of the game and not to get caught up in it? I mean, it's very tough going into a lot of games. You got to I mean, I trust all my teammates, obviously. I love them. They're all great players. But it is very tough to stay focused, you know, when you realize you might not need to score a lot that game. You need to do all the other things. And my role might not always be to score. So, obviously, it's very tough sometimes. Like, I got other people involved. But I have complete trust in everyone on my team. We've been practicing hard almost every day nowadays. So, I totally trust them. I think if that's the other team's game plans, then we'll be fine the rest of the way. Well, it, it's funny because actually, as you say that, it, it's true. I realize you obviously played on varsity as a 10th grader and you were in pretty much a, a corner shooter. You know, you were Jaime Salem, you know, when he did decide to pass every once and now and again, and I love Jaime, I can say that with a smile on my face, you know, he found you in the corner for a shot. Do you think also playing with, in Argentina with obviously a superstar teammates that help prepare you for the role of to be able to do things besides score and other items, you know, things you have to do in the court? Yeah, it's been great. Thankfully, I've had the opportunity to play so many different roles on different teams, whether it's either just being the shooter or being just the passer, the defense. It's thankfully I've had experience doing a lot of different things and definitely playing as a 10th grader, learning from Miami, all the good, the learning, what not to do. Like this definitely helped a lot. Right. I'm sure. Poppers, I'm actually I'm going to give Jordan a question now and then we'll, we'll you'll, you'll jump in here because do what it's doing what you want. All right. All right. So, Jordan, let's talk about the uh, the big game you guys had. I mean, it was, you know, on paper again, you're the underdog, which is ironic because you've never lost a playoff game. But I think, you know, if you came in, your season didn't didn't unfold the way that I would assume that you would have hoped. Right. You bet yeah. Jonah. 
you know, you guys are just all superstars, so cohesive together with Shalom and Cody, you know, leading you and all the other guys. Obviously, you had very high expectations. You won the championship in JV, varsity last year. So tell us about how you able you were able to overcome, and we know there were injuries at the beginning, but maintain your focus and really end up right now heading into, uh, you know, the semifinals in the spot that you envisioned yourself in, I'm sure, at the beginning of the season. So how did that, you know, get through the season to where you are now? Yeah, so to start the season, we obviously had the injuries everybody knew about. We started off very slow. Like, we won one game in Memphis and lost four straight after that. We were, like, all hurt. I don't even think we had, like, a pra- a full practice with our full team until, like, mid-December. So we didn't get a full practice in with all our teammates. No- we didn't even know the starting five until mid-December. Did you even have five? Did you even have five guys <laughs> with all the injuries? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we didn't have a starting five till mid-December. But we always knew, like, we weren't – we didn't think we were, like – like, some players thought, like, we were, like, the best team. But we, we didn't think we were the best team coming in. We thought, like, yeah, we always have a chance. We're good. We won the past two years. But we still, like, have to put in work. It's not just going to come to us. Nobody's scared to play us. But, like, yeah. So then coming to TABC, we were, like we – were, we came off of a nice win against DRS. We held them to, like, 25 points at the end of the third quarter. It's like Hold on. We- which victory against DRS? You beat them three times the third, in a row. I think. Third one, the playoff. Okay. One. <laughs> playoff one. We played great defense. We ended the third quarter like 60 25. They're a great team. Um, and we came in, we were confident. Everybody knew their everybody knows their role on our team. So that's like the greatest thing. Nobody's trying to do too much. Nobody's trying to do too little. Everybody finds you when you need it. Everybody's there. And it's, we didn't think we were the underdog coming in, but. Like, also, the other teams have a little bit of nerves when you're playing against a team that, like, it's a four seed coming in from the east against a one seed in the west. They might have a little nerves trying, like, in a close game against the four seed. Everybody thinks that they're going to kill us, but we have... Like, so, the- so, so you just decided not to make it a close game, so uh, they didn't have to worry about when anything like that. So, yeah, you, you speak like a seasoned veteran. Poppers, what do you... What do you have? You can go for Jordan, Kevin, whoever you're feeling. We're freestyling tonight. So yeah, let's, let's, stay, let's stay with Jordan right now. Uh, what do you think makes you guys so good in the playoffs, you know, besides being a good team? I mean, obviously, good teams win in the playoffs. But um, I feel like, you know, even even the game is where it's tight. You guys always just find a way to grind it out. Um, and you just feel you look more comfortable out there than the other team generally in those tight games. So I think first. We've all played in playoffs games our whole lives. Like North Shore and Half there, I think those are the only two teams that ever won a championship from sixth grade till now. I don't think any other team won a championship. So we had a lot of playoff experience coming in from 10th and 11th. And this year, we it's our last year. Most of us, four out of five starters are seniors. We didn't make Sarah check. Shalom told us before our playoffs started that these four games are our Sarah check. We have nothing else to look forward to. We have to put everything on the floor. So I think by us, like, we have nothing to give up. Every, everybody just gives it their all, all 32 minutes of the game. And it's worked so far. Right. It, it actually it actually seems that, you know, seeing you guys and being, being at some tournaments with you, you guys actually do have a have that calm presence off the court as well as on the court. I mean, Ben, sometimes I have to check to see if he has a heartbeat, but, you know, he, he is walking. He just he's not the most emotional guy. But I think that 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 factors onto the court, like what, what Akiva said. You know, you guys get there and you're calm in the moment. I think having the pedigree of, of the past championships, you know, definitely has uh, has helped. You know, get you to that spot. Yeah, yeah Pops, Kevin, what do you got? Yeah, let me get jump to Kevin here. Um, talking about the Ramaz game because I think you guys shot 11 for 17 from three. But like in addition to that, Ramaz kind of looked out of sorts offensively. Um, what do you think? Like what after the game um, did the coach uh, f- emphasize as as why he thought you guys won the game? Was it because you were able to generate good looks and hit them offensively, or was it because of you know how how well you were able to take Ramaz out of the rhythm? It was definitely a combination of both, I would say. But our focus all season has just been working on our defense, working on our defense. Even in the beginning of the year, when we started off slow, we'd score the ball easily we just couldn't defend and then obviously getting peter drucker back helped defensively helped out the rebounding and coming into the vermont's game we knew we knew we were going to score on them we just tried to hold them to 50 points that was our goal 
where like if we could hold them to this amount, we know we'll be able to outscore them pretty easily. Hey, right, when, well, yeah. when when you emphasize holding them to fifty, is that a let's hold them to twelve per quarter? Like how do you how do you go yeah, about? We try, that? we try to keep them ten to twelve a quarter, and then obviously they went off for twenty two points in the first quarter. So it was just about maintaining, not forcing anything on offense. We knew our defense would come because it's all we've been practicing the last month and a half. So the main focus then was not getting out of source on offense and staying with our good shots and driving, and kicking, and we were just getting so many open threes that they're bound to fall. Right. It's actually, it's actually ironic. I mean, obviously I was there, had to with, with go through all the pain myself. You know, obviously I was rooting for Ramaz, but it's true. All the looks you guys were getting were open. It wasn't even, I was talking to other people off the team. I'm like, they weren't, in, they weren't contested threes. I mean, meaning they all came off of penetration, dishing, moving the ball, which is a, a testament to you. But I want to ask you a question. You said something interesting um, with I was going to uh, focus in on Peter Drucker. Obviously, he went down, and he's, no pun intended, a big part of your game, right? He's a big boy. He's great around the basket. So now I see he's coming off the bench, which, you know, I guess Coach Honig has has rewarded Parker for his, his tremendous play that he's had throughout the season, and I get it. So how do you and your teammates now implement? Obviously, Peter is a great presence. He's great around the basket. How do you keep him in, on the offense and still maintain what you guys have done so well? So, yeah, we want to not get away from our game that we've been playing the last two, three months. We don't want to turn into a team that obviously we love him, but we don't want to rely on him and slack off and feel like, oh, we could just throw it into Peter and he'll save us. So we definitely want to stay with what we've been doing all season. And then it's a nice addition that something it's not working or you could throw it into the middle and he'll make something happen. So it's definitely very nice offensively and then defensively he just changes the entire game. You see guys yeah. all of a sudden like the less drives to the basket, you see no more offensive rebounds for teams. So it's definitely very nice defensively also. Yeah, for sure. Now, now, Jordan, you're going. You're going into Flatbush. You've played them. I uh, have usually a good memory. I think twice this season, times, at least one, three times. Three, three times. Okay, yeah. three times. I'm gonna. You're zero three against them, right? I don't think yeah. you've beaten them. So yeah. going going into Flatbush, obviously they have their pace is run, run, run. Your pace is slow it down. Let's be you know lethargic on offense. Lull them to sleep and you know use our mismatches between yourself and uh, and uh, Ben and Jonah. Um, so what is the, we don't, you don't have to give us your game plan, obviously. I don't expect you to, but you know, what is it like going in, knowing you have contrasting styles? They're the favorites, obviously, not that you're afraid of being, you know, an underdog. If you guys even consider yourselves an underdog, but what's, what's, how do you focus on Benny Kata knowing that you are someone who usually is one of the biggest guys on the court. And now you have Benny and a couple of the other guys in their team who are quite, you know, large. How do you focus on that and still maintain the play that you guys want to do? Okay, so first, we like to play at our own pace. We don't like anybody else like pushing the pace or like trying to get us to play at a faster pace. We like playing at our own pace, whatever Shalom teaches us. And more towards Benny, down low, I'm, I think it's tough for big men to play against us because me and Ben are two big guys down there. It's not like we're two little guys. Like most teams have one big guy, but we have like two big guys. So it's most of the time harder against big guys to play against us. I don't know in the past if he played like insanely well against us. He for sure done stuff, and it's like we just got to box him out on everything. He this guy jumps to the sky. Yeah, make sure have to you, box him out. Every have you play. have you played them at any point? I know at the beginning of the season, obviously in Mac David tournament, you weren't healthy. Have you played them at any point where the three of you were you know really health, healthy, not just coming back? Have you been at full strength yet when you when you've had a, a matchup with them? We played at mostly. Like, we are getting way better as our, our third time against them. I think we ended up losing by, like, eight or something. It was a close game throughout the whole game. They ended up they ended up pulling it out, obviously. But I don't think we played them with our full strength. I don't think they know, like, who we are as a team. I don't think most teams know who we are as a team because most teams we didn't play against them at our full strength. Right. And I think, I think this is actually a rematch of JV semifinals, yeah, right? We went, Where you guys yeah. went into – oh, wow. You went into Flatbush, deja vu, maybe, hopefully for you. You go, yeah. you went into Flatbush, upset them, obviously, in a semifinal game as a road road team, and you were able to uh, get yourself in the championship, which was against Mag and David, which I'm just you know, remembering now. So I guess the uh, 
the trajectory and the journey for you is uh, so far the story has been the same, which obviously you hope the ending is, is as well. Uh, Pops, what do you got for these these superstars? Yeah, I'm, I'm curious just because we've spoken a little bit about big men, um, you know, and Drucker and obviously Jordan and you and Ben also. Um, but but your your team approaches seem to be different. Um, I assume, Jordan, you guys emphasize um, the fact that one of you two is going to have a mismatch at the end of the day because no one can match up with both of you offensively. Um, and uh, Kevin, you spoke about um, how your focus hasn't, it seems, been um, getting into Peter, um, like forcing it into him. Um, but is it, have you been told like if if it's late in the game and we need a bucket we go to peter or is um are you truly still kind of like a guard centric team whichever order you want to answer it in. i mean i think we offensively and it's been told by our coaches that we could beat teams in a lot of different ways whereas if it's driving and kicking with the guards we could beat teams that way or there's almost no team in the league really besides maybe north shore that peter doesn't have a mismatch on so it's really just we could give him the ball at will and he will work. And then we also trust him now getting a lot better at catching the ball, one dribble and swing to the other corner. So we could play an inside out game with that also. It's really about matchups and we believe we could beat teams a lot of different ways, especially if Peter's locked in. And then at the end of the day, he's just nobody's really stopping him one on one at this point. All right, uh, Jordan, do you want to make pops? Was that question for Jordan also? Yeah, yeah. Or... yeah Jordan, do you, want, do you want to discuss kind of how you approach things given um, that you yeah. have to be in offensively? So most of the time we're going to approach it to play the game inside out, try to get it in the paint first so then our teammates have like more open looks on the outside if they have to focus on them being a mismatch down low. Like I, I personally don't think that I don't know anybody that could really stick with Ben. You know, Ben is a teammate. He's too big and too quick for like. If a big guy is gonna guard him, he's faster than them. And if a smaller guy is gonna guard him, he's too strong for them and too tall for them. So Shalom like emphasizes play it inside out. Try to get the ball inside first, and then once we get it inside and we start making our looks, then the outside shots are gonna start coming. Right. You you know what actually, and, I, and I'm thinking what's really been key and especially as we've gotten into the season for both of your teams is you've had, you know, your main, mainly senior driven teams, right? I mean, half their pretty much all seniors nor, and I'm saying the guys who are playing in the game, I would say, I know there's kids who are juniors, same as you guys at North shore, but you've had two huge uh, contributors. You know, first I'll start with you, Jordan. You've had uh, uh, Ellie or Eli. Is it Eli or Ellie? But Eli, 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 Eli Bahor, who is, I know, an instrumental part of your JV team when you won the championship. And then for Hafter, they had Ness Salem, who, you know, really has stepped up and developed throughout the season into a really strong, you know, shooter, facilitator. So I guess, Jordan, with you, tell us about that, how, you know, the importance of Ellie and, uh, you know, really contributing to your se senior-laden team. Yeah, so Eli Bahor, he's straight up, he's a dog. This kid's running on defense every single play. He's not letting anybody get by him. At the beginning of the season, he he started off slow. So it's like he was the the number one player on their JV team last year, and he's coming onto a team with like bigger guys and better players. But he's obviously a great player, and he adjusted to it amazingly. He he had, like he his IQ now. I've never seen it better before. He's taking smart shots, good shots, playing great defense. He's a huge part on our team. I really think I don't know what we would do without him. Honestly, he's great. Yeah, so he yeah he's been a you and he he's been he started all year for you guys. Yeah, from, he from, started. Yeah, from from Memphis. Yeah, right. So he's but been he there. turned into he turned into a dog. He wasn't a dog before, but now he's like he's that guy you need on your team. Right. Well, you don't want to upset Big Ben and Big Jordan, so you know he's got a, <laughs> the dog better come out of him. So Kevin, tell us about Ness Salem because he really I I think you know at the beginning of the year he was very playing very spot minutes. I haven't seen a, every half the game obviously, but I think. He's really, as his game has gotten better with his confidence, has become a huge contributor to tell us about his uh, ascension into, into you know, helping you guys where you're at. Yeah, so the main thing with Ness was, he, he was, first of all, he was always just an absolute scoring machine. He'd be able to score wherever you know, on his younger teams when he was the guy. He was, he'd be able to score at will. So now coming onto a team with high expectations and like a well-rounded team, 
the main thing was just him finding his role and where he could tr- could contribute, not having the ball in his hands the whole game. That's been a main thing for him, just getting in the right mental state because he's always been able to score at will. So now we found a role for him off the bench. He's that that team. Every team needs that guy off the bench where the offense is a little stagnant. You can put him in, and he could just get you six to eight points right away. So that's been right. great to have. And then he's also really been working on his defense. He's been one of the best rebounders I've seen for a guy his size. He just flies. He's been a great right. contributor lately. Very athletic. And and I was going to ask you, who do you, who's the better teammate, Ness or Hybe? No, I'm joking. That's not, not a question. We, they're both good. Um, all right, Pops, what, what do you got for them? Yeah, we were talking about individuals who have improved over the course of the season. Obviously, a key to, to winning um, when it gets late in the year is improving over the course of the season and, you know, not uh, peaking uh, too early. Um, can you speak, each of you, to, um, you know, what you guys think you still need to improve on? Like, what is what is that one thing um, which you've been trying to lock in on in practice, um, which you just haven't gotten all the way there, which if you do get all the way there, um, you think you can win a championship? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think for us, our main thing is transition. We don't have that many transition points because we mostly, like, slow the game down. But if we were able to get in transition and get like maybe four points each quarter, that's an extra 16 points a game, which is great for us because we don't score that many points. If you see our, if our, like the end scores, we're like a heavy defensive team. We just held like a great TABC offensive team to like 24 points in the whole game. So if that like uh, transition offense could come to us, I really think it would be hard to stop us. Our main thing, watching film lately, we've been watching a ton of film, and the main thing that stands out is just boxing out along with the off-ball defense. We have a lot of guys that can play on-ball defense, and then in our defense specifically, relies a lot around the help, and we just have guys, we have lapses where there's guys just walking into the paint, and backdoor cuts, leading to more offensive rebounds like that. So we could just lock in on every possession and not take any plays off, boxing out or anything, and not give up three points and make the other team earn everything. And we should be good. I have I have two more well I have two more questions for each of you, and then if Poppers has some, we'll jump in. So, all right, you guys are pretty much you have a few games left in your season in your careers, you know, in in Yeshiva basketball. So I want you to be honest with this, Kevin. Start with you. Three players that you know, if you're going up against, you're like, oh. I have to go up against this guy. He's a tough competitor. He's he's a, he's a someone who I don't love. I mean, obviously, you love the competition, but someone whose game that you respect and can really give you a hard time and make you have to work, you know, to get your points. So give me three guys. Number one, Jordan Zarker, for sure. Uh, I was <laughs> gonna, I was gonna, say, I was gonna <laughs> say no, no. I was gonna say you can't. Ask, Jordan doesn't count, and Kevin doesn't count for Jordan. So Jordan, you get a little time to think of it. Go. You'll give one, Kevin. Then we'll jump to Jordan. You need to give three. So give us one. So first, um, I would say from Armaz Bobby Segura, I was kind of surprised a little that they didn't start him on me because there was a game in the Armaz tournament where he mostly picked me up full court and gave me a little bit of a hard time with his length and athleticism. So I was a little surprised that he wasn't guarding me for a little. That one definitely gave me trouble during the Ramaz tournament. Gotcha. Jordan, you're up. We're going to go My back to the first forward. guy. He's actually from half there. Jake Quarkoff. I absolutely hate playing against him. <laughs> this kid's going to box you out even when you don't have the ball or a shot's not even up. He could be standing at the three point line. He'll just be boxing me out. It's the most annoying thing to play against. It's impossible <laughs> to get any rebounds off of him. He's like, right. I, want, I, I hate playing against him. See, it, just so you know, for everyone out there, you don't, it's not every superstar. It's not every great shooter. It could be a role player, a hustler. And uh, it's good to hear, uh, you know, Jake Parker get that shout out. Kevin, who do you got? And don't give me a North Shore guy to make nice that Jordan did. It's good. I want to hear who your second guy is. No, I'm joking. It could be anyone who you who you feel. Um, I give a shout out to Mag and David, Phil Sure, He's been pretty mm-hmm. good defender on me. He played them a few times also. He's very strong. He knows what we, I play them a lot lately, so he knows what my game is. They, so he gave me a little bit of trouble the first time we played them. Kevin, Kevin's already game planning. He's being nice to his <laughs> opponent. He's like, yeah, 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 Kevin. 
Smart like, and a good ball player. He's like, I really want to have Phil Schur on me, so let me tell everyone. Right, right. Phil on me. <laughs> right. I love it. Not give them anything. Kill them with kindness. That's what it is. Jordan, who, who's, uh, who's your, you know, uh, your my second, second guy? guy is going to be from also who I'm playing in the semifinals, Benny Kada. He jumps at everything. It's really hard to like get around the basket by him. He's he's a block machine, as you guys see on like all these reels that are posted, whatever is posted. He's really good at like that help side defense. You think you get by your first guy, but then like you're spinning and you just see him in like the corner of your eye jumping and his hands like at the rim. Like you have to like adjust your shot mid air. So that's my second guy. It's hard to. All right, out. Kevin, who's your last? I'll go outside the Yeshiva League. We played against yeah. Alex August twice mm-hmm. in the Saturn tournament. And I knew he was an offensive machine shooting the ball. And then he would just get in your face on defense, press you all the way up. And it was something I was not expecting from him. So that was definitely one of them. All right. All right. And Jordan, who's who's our Third last guy? Uh... Is Ohion from Ramaz. He's like a six foot six one, but he's like a big man or guard. I don't even know what to call him. He's fast. He's physical. He's strong. He's able to play like on. He's able to guard. I probably think almost anybody in the league. He's really strong and he's really quick. He could guard you anywhere on the court. Yeah. Well, there we go. Some great names. Um, I I have my my last question. Then Poppers will jump in. Actually, Poppers, you jump in before I ask my last question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let's see what your last question is. Okay. So my last question is that you guys are both on the road, right? You're both you're both going into semifinals on the road. Tell us about the support that your fans have, because I know saw it firsthand with Hafter. The guys came out to Ramaz, uh, bus loads, you know, led by Botnik and all those other guys. They were great. They were fabulous. Tell us about that support, Kevin. And then for you, Jordan, I know the North Shore, you know, Lions, they, they pack the house, they go on the road. They support you guys like no one else. And it's great to see that environment. It really makes Yeshiva basketball so much fun. So tell us, you know, about what that fan support does to you, especially on the road in such a big game coming up. So, yeah, we kind of were expecting that huge fan crowd with all those buses because we had a game against Waterbury the week before. And our student body was a little embarrassed getting from those Waterbury fans because they just completely took over the gym. So our fans, Pop, they, been, they do that a lot. Water they do, very but good our fans took that a little personal, including Botnik, and they're like, "We're going into Ramaz, and we're just going to take it over." So it was very fun. It was the first away playoff game that we played, so it was great to have an environment like that. And the Ramaz fans were also very into it. It was a very fun game. Jordan, what about you and your North Shore compadres? For us, I'm going to be totally honest. We don't have that many fans. It's mostly our parents. Like, each person's parents, we don't have that many people. Maybe, like, 15 to 20 kids will come to, like, an away game. Like, we had, like, 20 kids come to our, like, quarterfinal game at TABC. North Shore, are you listening? Are you listening to Jordan? (laughs) They know they're going to win, so they don't need to bring the fans. No, we don't have such good fans. But I do love playing these away games. It's really, like, a good feeling when you beat the team that has all their fans. Like, our, our home game against DRS, we had fans, but... They probably had like 150 people in the gym. It felt like they were they were the home team just playing at our court. But I love playing against the away teams and beating them at their home. It feels all good. right. Well, well, there you go, you guys. First of all, congrats again. Both of you are players of the week. You're gonna give me. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll text you. We'll get your addresses. Coolkeepers.com is gonna send you uh, a gift certificate so you can uh, you know maybe get some championship keepers or whatever you know whatever semifinals whatever. So however it, it unfolds and the season plays out. But honestly. You know, both of you and a lot of people do know or don't know you guys were teammates at Hafter in 6th, 7th, 8th grade. You won the championship, I believe, almost every year in middle school that you guys were together. Am I right about that? Or 7th. Eight, 8th was COVID. Oh, okay. All right. So COVID beat you. But other than that, you know, no one has taken you guys off. So, And, and I know you're great friends. And uh, I just wanted to thank you. Best of luck to you guys as the season, you know, hopefully continues for each of you for two more games. And, uh, you know, wherever it takes you, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for having us. And now we bring you our, for the last time, oh no, uh, yeah, for the last time in the season, the Holy Schnitzel Games of the Week, because our next episode will be after the championship. So, well, you know, maybe we'll we'll do it on the Instagram poppers. We'll uh, pr- give our predictions or so. We'll, uh, we'll figure that maybe. out. Be, right. 
be hard not to pick the championship game when we've been picking some games of the week throughout the season. But uh, Holy Schnitzel is our sponsor, as we've talked about, for our games of the week. And guess what? We're going to pick two really good games that we have this week. Um, you know, coming up, we have the semifinal matchups. We'll start with the uh, first of the, I was about to say the conferences, but they're all from the uh, Eastern Conference. So there we have uh, Hafter Magan will be the first one we talk about. And then we have Flatbush North, North Shore will be the second. So ironically enough, this happened two years ago uh, when all teams from the Western Conference were in the uh, semifinals, SAR, TABC, Ramaz, and Frisch. So obviously it happens, and this is uh, where we are now. So we'll start with the uh, Hafter uh, Magan David game. Obviously, Hafter goes in as the underdog. I mean, that's no secret to anyone who's playing Magan David. They haven't lost, obviously, since 2023, but I think they're on a 20 game win streak or right about there. They're 30 and two, or they've, they've won everything. The only tournament they haven't won was the, uh, the Memphis tournament where they lost to Flatbush. Right. And they lost to um, Frisch. That was the other one. Right. And they lost to Frisch. So they, they've just been hoisting trophies throughout the tournaments they've been in, uh, beating everyone. It's going to be a great game. This will be. At least the third time they're playing Hafter. Um, Hafter is 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 for all sake, you know, playing with house money. I don't think anyone. Um, well, you know, they, has, they they kept it very close in that last game of the season. Yes, they did. I was going to say they kept it very close, but I, I think everyone views them as the underdog, you know, except for those those kids on that court and Joe, Coach Joey and Coach Leroy. Um, but I, this is going to be a great game. It's in Magan, and for Magan last year they. As on the JV level, they lost the semifinal game at home. So kids like Shabin and Cher um, in a bed and some of those other kids who are on the JV know that you can't be too cocky about that. And the seniors are obviously, you know, locked in, looking to get that game in the championship. So as you mentioned, they played each other the last game of the season where Hafter was very competitive. I don't, I'm almost positive Drucker did not play or if he did play very sparingly. Um, and you know, they kept it close, but ultimately Magan was able to go in, in victorious. I look at this game and then I'll let you jump in poppers. I see, you know, if I'm giving odds, I say Magan is, is probably a nine to 12 point favorite. I think, I, I think, I think they're with the firepower they have. I, I think they're in that vicinity. Um, I personally see Magan winning. I see this being a very close game. I see, I see Hafter really trying to get to get them going with what works well, which is dishing, getting Kevin to be not only a scorer, but when Kevin is a facilitator and the shooters that he's surrounded by, Freundlich, Goldschmidt has really improved his three-point ball, Siri, you know, and, and now Ness Salem, you know, shooting the ball, which we just saw against Ramaz when they went 11-17. to 17. That's really the way to go at, at Magan David. But the key for them is Peter Drucker. The one thing that Magan lacks is yeah. size, besides, uh, you know, Jackie yeah. Haber. Um, that's it. He, they don't really, you know, Smecky's tall, Sardar, Sardar's tall, but they're slender. They're not like big traditional posts. They're more wing players. So if the game plan is to get Drucker the ball, and obviously he's been coming off the bench, establish him and, you know, make sure he touches the ball at every possession, even if he's not a scorer, but to draw the double and triple teams. And as Kevin said, you know, he's getting good at kicking it out. I think that's the way they can go. Before I give my prediction, what what are you what are you looking yeah. for in this Ari, game? And what do you see, Ari? I think you're spot on in terms of what Hafter needs to do if they want to win this game. Um, get Trucker the ball, uh, maybe run some cutting action off it just to clear the help and let him go one on one. That's that's what I would do if I was Hafter. I'd do it on every single possession. Um, I mean, obviously, Megan's going to have to work to, to deny Hafter, you know, Trucker the ball in the first place. Um, but if you're able to get Trucker the ball. Um, I think Hafter has a real good shot of pulling this off. I don't think they're going to win this game um, going guard guard for guard, kind of. Uh, I think Magan's just too talented. Yeah, you you can't you can't go possession to possession with Magan. They're just you're going to score, they're going to score. It's just they're not there are too many weapons. Agreed. Uh, I think it's it's pretty clear both of us are going to pick Magan here. Um, uh, are we giving scores here? I guess I'll go. Yeah, score. yeah. You you want to go um, first, and then I'll I'll give a uh, fifty nine fifty one. Wow, who's right exactly where I was going to say? Because Kevin gave, <laughs> Ken, I, I was going to, you know, so you got a fifth, you got an eight point victory for Magan, but you yeah. see, you see, you see it being close throughout, or like you know, Magan playing in double digit lead. I, and then, I think, I think it'll stay in the seven to ten range, basically the entire game. I think Magan will jump out to a little lead, and then it'll just kind of stay there. Right. So I, I again agree. I pick Magan's win. I just think the offensive firepower, even if Hafter comes out and plays that great great game plan that we just put into the coach's playbook. And, you know, we're not geniuses here, but when you have a six, five guy who's really good around the basket and has great footwork, you got to utilize him. 
But I just think the Magan, as we've discussed, you know, now they have three all stars on their team. Phil shares an all star and probably almost other any other team. I mean, they have so much firepower on offense that it's just hard to go against it. But I also I see it being, you know, I see actually Hafter even coming out maybe starting this game with with the lead. As I say, every game starts zero zero. You got to separate. But I can see Hafter scoring the first six point six nothing. They're up or so. But again, I just see Mag and Dave between their home crowd, the hungriness. Think about it. None of these guys have won a high school championship. And I know um, they had the COVID year, the seniors, the freshman year. But we uh, we talked about with Benny Zar- uh, with Jordan Zarka. <laughs> I told Jordan I would do that once. So there it is. That they played each other in the semi- in the championship of the JV game. And, and North Shore was victorious in overtime against this Mag and Dave kid. Minus a small kid who wasn't there named Moses Smecky, who could be a big difference maker. So, you know, this is going to be a game where I think Magan just wins. I think they also win by the score of 62 to 53. I think it's in, it's in that range. Uh, and again, it's not, you know, Kevin said we got to hold them to 50. It's, 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 it's really hard to hold it. But, you know, we've seen have to do some uh, things, uh, uh, you know, where well, they really value each possession and let's see what can happen. But we're both in agreement, 62, 53 myself with, with Magan, you know, going on to the championship. And, and you're at 59, 50, 59, you said 59, 51, um, also with uh, with Mackin going on. Uh, and then our our next big one, we have uh, Flatbush taking on North Shore. You know, this where this is, you know, it's funny before we even get to that. I, want, I wonder what besides the fan bases for these four schools, but I would assume most schools are rooting for a Maggie and Flatbush rematch because it would be the fifth time they probably played each other. Just yeah, a rivalry. Right. I mean, I know North Shore, North Shore Hafter has a rivalry. I mean, all these teams, but I, I think league wide, I think people want to see what, what it's no argument to say that those two teams have been the best teams all season. Right. Yeah. We've talked about it. Our power ranks is neither of them has gone from one or two, you know, any, any lower than that. Besides, um, for, besides for when Megan lost a fish, but then we right, corrected it be dropped, pretty quickly. Right. Right. They, right. It, it, it corrected itself out rather, rather quickly. So, you know, this this is a game, it's it's interesting. And, and as I'm talking, it's one of those things that I said to you, I don't know who I'm picking. So the key is, as, as, as Jordan mentioned, Flatbush plays at fast pace, offensively and defensively. They'll pick you up. Coach Mal is doing a fabulous job. He's running 10 kids, you know, seven to 10 kids out there who are, who are all dogs. They're picking you up full court. They're making you work for everything. North Shore has five kids who play. You know, maybe they're going to throw in a Le'Veon off the bench here and there. Maybe another kid, a shooter. They don't have Altman or or one of their shooters blitz. You know, they don't have a ton of guys who are who are, are going to be able to keep that together. And North is going to have to slow it down. It's going to be contrasting styles. It, it's going to be a huge game. And you know, and I think it's just going to be like the will of you know, are Jordan and Ben going to be able to impose their will of their size? They do have that size advantage, even though you know Kangaroo Kate is there. They don't have those other guys. Their their other best players are guards. So you know, how do you see this game unfolding? Yeah, I think it comes down to Flatbush's ball pressure and whether or not um, North Shore is able to handle it. Because if North Shore is able to get um, cleanly um, into the half court and just um, kind of make it a grinded out game and limit the turnovers, uh, I think they're in great shape. I think they hold the edge, but. Um, I think it's going to be very tough for them to avoid um, too many turnovers, which will result in transition buckets for Flatbush. Um, they, Flatbush just does such a good job of of making you work for every pass. Yeah, um, I'm not sure North Shore has the guard play to be able to avoid having enough, uh, not enough uh, to avoid having not enough issues such that they can then score enough to match Flatbush's output. Right. Um, because obviously, you know, if this game is in the 50s, North Shore can't win. Uh, I'd be shocked at least if they did. I don't I don't see how North Shore gets to 50. Um, yeah. so the game's got to be in the 30s or the 40s, and, um, you know. That's hard to do against Flatbush when, when we said they're difficult. offensively, right. Yeah, uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give the prediction this one first, because you, you went sure. first on the other one. So... All along, I was going Flatbush, and I just feel like the heart of a champion. the The fact that North Shore has the North Shore seniors have never lost a playoff game uh, from tenth, eleventh, and now twelfth grade. I just feel like that they're in the moment that they are going to handle the pressure. Uh, and I talk about the game, the, the game pressure of the overall game and the atmosphere. 
And I like the fact that, uh, you know, with a little insight from Jordan Zarka, being on the road actually excites these guys, right? They love to go into that environment. And Infobish is going to be crazy. The Triangle Jam, if I'm saying it right, is fabulous. I haven't been there personally, but I know, shout out to the All-Star Game, by the way. All-Star Game, yeah. Yeah, who's going to be hosting at, hosting that game. But that atmosphere is going to be crazy. I saw some videos when Magan went there and, and people on the on the upper tier, lower tier. I mean, it was like, it's going to be it's going to be packed and, and, and uh, they do a great job over there for with the coach mouth and uh, the athletic director as well, Adam. So I just actually see North Shore winning this game. I see them winning again. It's, it's going to be a low score and I see it. I can even see an overtime game. I know I've, I've said that a bunch of times in different in different uh, predictions, but I, I could see that going overtime. But I think North Shore just wins this game by three to five points. Um, I I, I to give a score is hard because, like you said, they're not like a, a juggernaut of an offensive team. But I think they win this game like, you know, 47 to 43 in that range. <laughs> that's that's my prediction. But I think uh, Norsher marches on to the championship. I'll explain why I left soon. Uh, just firstly, we should point out that uh, we didn't pick this past round, but we texted each other what we would have picked. And right. we each went three and one in our picks incorrectly, having Ramaz beating Hafter, but correctly having North Shore upsetting the ABC. Yes. Um, so, um Okay. We have, we, and whoever, we, whoever wants to fact check that, you know, if you want to get it yeah. to, to, to Poppers and Wickes' DMs, you can say. I, I think <laughs> right now we're tied on the season and you have the tiebreaker. Um, anyways, the reason I laughed is because I was going to pick Flatbush 47-43. Wow. Uh, can you know that exact score? I was um, wondering what the, what the, I've never seen such emotion out of you, Akiva. That was like. Yeah, well, was I like, thought it was yeah. funny that you got the exact score I was going to go the opposite way with. Um, man, I. The, the 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 thing with this pick is I don't feel comfortable with it because me neither. By the way, you would, you would think if, if it's a tight game late, advantage North Shore. Um, the problem is I'm just not sure they have enough. Um, it, it's tough. It's tough to say that. I I do think. Well, it's um, it's Akiva. It's not that tough to say because I think we would both be in agreement if we say yeah. who has a better chance of blowing each other out. We would both say Flatbush. Right, Flatbush. I guess. I one my point kind of is one through five Flatbush is more talented. Um, and I, I think that is a significant gap between the two. Um they, obviously North Shore has three studs, but um I, I do think there is there's a gap, especially when it comes to the guard play here. Um and I just and while at the end of the day, um post play is what wins in close games, um, I just don't know if North Shore has enough. Um, so I'll take Flatbush 47-43. By, by that result and, and the fact that I'm taking Flatbush in a close game um, here, that does kind of mean that I think that Flatbush is going to be in the lead late. Um, if, I don't think, therefore, it's going to be a comeback um, because that wouldn't make sense with the whole logic that I've provided. Right. Um, so I guess I'll say similar situation to the other game. Maybe Flatbush holds like a five-point lead the entire game. Uh, and then North Shore cracks down to one possession, but you can't get over the hump. Uh, let's roll with that. I don't know. I don't feel right. comfortable with it, but we're it, going anyways. I was going to say, stop talking before you convince yourself to change your thoughts. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> changing. I'm not changing. All right, but I, I think I think we're also. I, I think like if you're going to put a spread at this, I think I think Flappers comes in as probably a six to seven point favorite. If that's I think too much for me. Maybe maybe that's a little much. I'm also yeah. factoring the home court. Maybe you know right. Maybe a little less, four to five. But uh, again, I think it, it, look, these are semifinal games. This is where stars stars are made, legends are are are, are, are you know really born. And I think we're we have great players in all these matchups. We have superstars on both sides of, of the ball. Uh, great teams, great schools, great fan bases, uh, great coaching. And I think it's uh, you know not only has has the uh, the seniors in North are not lost a playoff game, but Coach Shalom you know took over last year. He hasn't lost a playoff game. He's been through, you know, like a heavyweight fight this season with his team down and out and then coming back. So co- kudos to him and Coach Cody Cohen. So and then you got Malk, the rookie, the rookie who's not really a rookie. He's rookie in the Yeshiva League uh, yeah. in the varsity level. But he's done a fabulous job. I mean, he has imposed his will and his style of play on Flatbush. And they've responded, mm-hmm. you know, stupendously. So that's that's great. And then, you know, for Maggie, you got Coach Ike, uh, Spike, Benny. Morris and half there, you got Joey and Leroy. Um, so it's going to be great. You know, everyone wants to be in this position, game planning. Everyone, the, the whole Yeshiva League is going to be focused on watching these games. Uh, and I believe their Wednesday night is the uh, half their game, half their um, Maggie, and then Thursday is uh, the Flatbush North Shore game. So 
we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, those are our predictions. We both got Magan. I got North Shore. Pops got Flatbush. And, uh, you know, our next plays of the week, uh, just to, to mention, will be shown at our um, at our last uh, episode in, in, in uh, the podcast after the championship game. So please continue to uh, to send those in. And also, let's give out a shout out to uh, to all the people, you know, first of all, Poppers and you know, you put this all-star t- game together with the help of obviously Flatbush, um, you know, providing their gym. Um, I have no part in it. So anyone who's texting me, why am I not an all-star? I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, doing the podcast here. But I think first of all, kudos to you. It, it's so fabulous to see the excitement that these kids are having. And, you know, you go online when you, when you announce the all-stars and all of a sudden the messages, you know, like kids are like, you know, supporting their friends, you know, mocking this guy, mocking that guy, all goodwill, but it's great. I think that's what the, 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 uh, the vehicle of Yeshiva League Pass is to get this uh, notoriety. So uh, congrats to all those people who are named to the All-Star team on the JV and varsity level. And uh, what's the date of that game again, Pops? April 3rd, Wednesday, right after Sarajuk. Got it. So it's going to be, uh, you have, a, a, you know, excitement yes, even yes. after the season ends. Yeah. So that that's it. We want to thank our uh, our sponsors, Cool Keepas, Cool Fringes, Wear your keepers, wear your sitzes, buy them at the, those places. But even if you're wearing them and buying them at another place, that's still good. But they are definitely better at cool keepers and cool fringes. And uh, holy schnitzel, you know, they've just been such a great supporter of the show. And, you know, eat, eat, eat there, enjoy it, do everything you can. And when you finish your meal, make sure you have a cool keeper, Jamakan, and, and bench. And, uh, you know, get all worldwide, we'll get both of our sponsors involved. So that's it. Yeshiva League po- uh, Pass Podcast tip off show number nine is in the books.